project cost management scenario. The budget was planned. What happened? What didn't the team do? Objective. Show how the project manager should manage costs. Mary has assigned responsibilities to each team member to estimate costs for each activity their subordinates are working on. Two months later, on the final day for submitting all estimates, she calls for a brief meeting to discuss collective concerns and next steps. You call this a budget? It has more holes in it than Swiss cheese. That reminds me, almost time for lunch. Sit down, mister. Nobody leaves this room until we get some more realistic estimates. Especially you, Mike. It looks like most of you use some combination of analogous estimating based on past projects with some parametric estimation. That's good. But, Mike, what did you do? Pick a number out of the air, add a 20% fudge factor, and say that'll work? No good? No. Look, people, this project, just like every project, is going to need funding. How well we estimate those funds and where I allocate them is going to mean success or failure. Now, I realize that with the kind of project scope we have laid out with the modernization program for the SD16, we can't really tell what the total cost will be until we turn that last screw. Sure, we may not be able to predict the future, but we can come up with some better estimates than you have here. Henry, tell me, what do you think makes a good estimate? I tell my guys that a good estimate clearly defines our goals. But I also want to know what assumptions they made putting it together, and how long it will be good for. I don't want anything held back. No surprises. Good. Julia, anything else that we can tell Mike? We need to be on the same page with our acceptable range of variants. But if we really want to create a definitive budget, we need to break down the deliverables we're going to supply to our customer, Mr. Doe. A work breakdown structure. Excellent, Julia. I see. With the WBS, we can account for the cost for each deliverable. By deconstructing the project like that, I can figure in the cost of everything my team needs to make each deliverable. Not only the cost of my materials, but labor, outside consultants, whatever. Now you've got it. And speaking of deliverables, I think lunch just arrived. Project Cost Management Scenario Mary is managing a project team of five and has assigned responsibilities to each team member to estimate costs for activities their subordinates are working on. Two months later, on the final day for submitting all the estimates, she calls for a brief meeting to discuss collective concerns and next steps. It appears everyone used a combination of various approaches, but mainly parametric and analogous estimating. A peer review was scheduled into the planning activities to review all estimates. That unearthed a number of flawed assumptions and constraints that had not been considered. Also, some of the work had to be decomposed further to give a more realistic estimate. A week later, after some adjustments to the cost estimates, Mary was ready to work on a final budget by rolling up the estimates into the final projected cost amount for the project. She also factored in contingency reserves and had a meeting with management to finalize management reserves. Work could not be performed without a budget to spend on the project, Planning how to estimate and budget the project's costs and how to effectively manage the budget is a very important aspect for project managers to understand before taking any PMI exam. Understanding a defined approach to managing project costs will better help you in your real-world project management. Summary This chapter on project cost management focused on approaches to estimate single tasks and how to budget the whole project. Responsibilities of the project manager include Estimating costs for individual project activities Determining the overall budget for the project by rolling up all the tasks into a total sum. Apportioning budget per work period depending on the work to be accomplished. Controlling the budget to the approved baseline using forecasting and earned value metrics. Exam tip. In preparation for the exam, be sure to understand the difference between estimate costs and determined budget. Understand the tools used throughout project cost management. Analogous, top-down, bottom-up, Parametric and three-point estimating are estimating tools you could be tested on in both time and cost management. Reserve analysis and cost aggregation are used when determining the overall project budget. Know the difference between a contingency reserve and a management reserve. Regarding the control costs process, earned value management is big on the exam. You could easily get a bunch of gimmies by correctly answering the easy calculations for SPI, 
CPI, SV, CV, and knowing how to manipulate the formulas when, for example, SPI and PV are given, and you are asked to find EV. Understand what these metrics mean, e.g., SPI less than 1, CPI greater than 1, SV equals 0, CV less than 0, etc. Understand forecasting, various formulas for EAC and ETC. Also understand VAC, TCPI, and the relationship between PV and BAC. Hello, welcome to Chapter 7 in the PMBOK Guide 5th edition. Chapter 7 is all about cost management. Cost management involves four processes. The first process, as usual, is to plan how to do it. Plan how do we manage our cost on this project. For that reason, you come out with a cost management plan. After you have come out with a cost management plan, the next step is to begin to estimate how much each activity listed in the project schedule will cost. Some people go that low into that level of detail. Other people stay at a higher level of detail, aggregating the cost per work package. Some other companies might just give you, there's your budget and I want you to work the numbers in. And we call that a top-down estimate in which you've got the high-level number and you begin to work the high-level number into the lower levels of work that needs to be done. However you tackle cost management, bear in mind that the level of detail and attention that you pay to planning your budget and making sure that all of those costs are realistic, that will determine your level of success as a cost manager. Some PMs I know have never managed costs on their projects. They're given a, a load of money from management and management says, you know, even if you go over it, it's not a problem. This is what we're starting out with, make it happen. As a result of many people being paid as salaried employees, they tend not to worry that much about costs. But if you've ever worked for a projectized organization where you are being billed by the hour, then you know that cost management is very important. If you've worked on government type contracts, then you know that cost management is very important. You know the value of keeping those receipts and if you've worked on cost plus incentive fee contracts, you will appreciate what cost management is. If you have not managed costs on a project, don't worry, just follow along and I would strongly recommend that you look out for my videos on YouTube they're out there and they're free on earned value management because it will help you. If you have signed up for our program, definitely take the part of earned value management very seriously. It's a big area on the exam. So after you have estimated costs for each activity, the next thing you do is you determine your budget. How do you determine your budget? Well, you've got the cost for each activity. You need to add all of those up into a final total and that final total becomes your project budget. Now hopefully as you are trying to deduce your budget, you have also thought about reserves. So you're thinking not just about time reserves, you're also thinking about cost reserves to take care of certain risk events. All of that needs to be determined. Now when we talk about determining budget, we must also think about our cost performance baseline. Now when you think about your cost performance baseline, bear in mind that the baseline for cost performance includes those contingency reserves. It does not include those management reserves. The budget does, but the cost performance baseline does not. We'll talk more about that when we get to determine budget. And then the final thing we do in cost management is we control cost. Controlling cost is all about ensuring that you're not going over and making sure that if any change needs to occur as far as budget is concerned, you make sure it's legit, you make sure it's valid, but all changes need to be passed through the Perform Integrated Change Control process. So the Change Control Board, they'll take a look at those recommended changes and they'll sign off on it and make those changes and make it formal or not. In project cost management, the project manager should ensure that there's an understanding of the stakeholders' requirements for managing cost on a project. You know, various stakeholders have different ideas and perspectives, different ways in which costs should be managed. 
the government, for example, as a stakeholder, has its own unique way that costs should be managed. They are very particular about earned value management being used, especially if you're a government agency or you're working with a government agency. It becomes very important. Also, cost management is concerned with how much resources cost to complete the project. This is where you go through some trade-offs, trying to identify where majority of the project costs come from and where you can cut back on the project cost. Sometimes you might cut back on things such as a design review. In fact, I've heard even more outrageous things like some of my students say, Phil, I don't manage risks on my project because my stakeholders will not pay for risk management meetings. Or my stakeholders will not pay for me to manage risks. Although that's a little bit outrageous, but there are various trade-offs that you can make on your project to cut back on cost. You consider alternatives. You consider certain costs that may be recurring. Have you ever thought of how much you spend when you drag everyone into a meeting for two hours and those are billable resources? Thoughts such as that will necessitate additional trade-offs of how many meetings, how you will communicate on the project and with whom, who should be in the meeting, who should not, and things such as that. Also realize that what you're doing when you are managing cost in the early stages of estimating is you are predicting, you're making predictions based on current conditions. And since those current conditions can change, ultimately you will need to go through various iterations of estimating or of budgeting, depending on the nature of your project. Also in cost management are areas such as return on investment, discounted cash flow, net present value, and so on. Some of those subjects come up in cost management on especially capital projects, but a lot of project managers may not be familiar with these terms, and that's okay. But I would suggest that you have a general understanding of what could be in cost management and what may not be in cost management. I would say read page 195 in the PMBOK Guide 5th edition and get to understand what cost management could entail. Let's talk about the first process of cost management, which is plan cost management. 